Okay, Sarah. So I don't know if you heard the robot, but recording is in progress. I um, did hear the robot. <laughs> I know you're having a great day, as you told me prior to the recording. So yes. um, I am going to dig right into the movie, uh, Potato Dreams of America. When yeah. you first heard that title, like, I, I guess, let me, let me ask, how did you get involved with this? Was it pitched to you? Yeah. And, okay. So then when you first no. heard that title, what was your thought? It definitely was not pitched to me. That would that would be a special day when I when I get pitches. Um, it just came through my inbox like any other audition from my agent. Sorry, it um, came through my inbox like any other audition from my agent. Um, and I had to do a self tape, which is just like you you know tape your own audition. Um, and I sent it into Wes. And I think I knew like pretty much from the from the onset that it was a pretty special project. Um, and yeah, I saw the title and I was like pardon me what, but there's information about it on, on the Google because of his story being a short before it was a feature. So I pretty, I pretty soon was like, okay, the, the what subsided and I just kind of got excited and yeah, luckily that he cast me and, and here we are today. <laughs> so you had, had you seen the first, so I know that you had um, mentioned prior to mm -hmm. uh, the interview that the second half of the film was shot first before the mm -hmm. first half of the film. Were you able to see that um, half before accepting the role or was that filmed no. after you were already cast? No, it was filmed before I was attached. I think I was offered the role probably about two weeks before we started um, filming uh, the section that I was in. Um, and I actually didn't see any of the footage from the second half because they are the two halves are very different. So. I almost feel like that was a good, it didn't even cross my mind to ask because this is my first movie. So I was just kind of like, I don't know, what do I do? Um, but but yeah, I think I'm kind of glad that I didn't see it. Otherwise I feel like I might've been sort of uh, confused, like not confused, but it's good that I didn't know what the other half was going to be like, you know? Right, because it's two very, I mean, they're polarizing. Uh, yeah, two, two very, very different tones and um vibes and energies so yeah I think it was I think it was a good thing this is the oh cat you gosh. asked about <laughs> <laughs> hi boo <laughs> you, viewers and listeners understand who she is so, so yeah it's okay for <laughs> she's her a legend pop. yeah the reason the door is open is because she's gonna push it open regardless <laughs> <laughs> we invite we invite you bibbidi bobbidi boo mm -hmm. bibbidi. into this wonderful <laughs> meeting <laughs> uh she, she dreamed of america so don't you, we all have you always been um i guess to get a little personal before i jump back to the movie um mm -hmm. have you always been in america like yes. were you born here yeah I was born and raised in Seattle okay did you have any like family or anybody close to you that came overseas that you were able to speak with when uh doing research for the role no I I'm very much uh I'm a couple of generations removed from the immigrant experience both of my great grandparents um I believe on uh either side and then farther than that also like are from Ireland and Italy so it's it's very much like we've been in the United States for a while and very acclimated to being right. American and calling ourselves that so the immigrant experience which is like such a core of this movie was something that I just like you know you read about you hear about it but I personally I, I knew nothing about what that was like so right so then did you get let me ask you if Wes sat down any of the actors or actresses like yourself and kind of express to you guys what his experience was outside of the script. Um, yeah. And kind of tell you a little bit more that that's not in the movie so that you would have that <coughs> to refer to. Yeah, I mean, he's definitely an open book about his experience and was the um, best reference that any of us could have had in terms of like, um, you know, you can, you can Google, you can research, you can read all the things, but to have, the person whose literal experience it was right in front of you like there's nothing there's nothing better than that and there's nothing richer than that experience so having him there was the best resource that i think any of us could have had yeah that's a uh, i can definitely imagine that was he so you said that he had already done a short for this prior mm -hmm. to 
Uh, and that's not something that I was familiar with. So had you seen yeah. the short before you um, uh, ended up joining the project? I hadn't. It's a it's a documentary and it's called Little Potato. And it, it's basically it's about the story that Potato Dreams of America is about. And he made it kind of after already knowing that he wanted to make the feature film, but sort of as an avenue towards being able to make the feature. He made this he made Little Potato and that also premiered at South by Southwest. I want to say in 2017, but I, I might get that. I might have that wrong. Um, and that sort of like helped him on the road towards being able to make Potato Dreams of it's America bigger. and the bigger scope. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. So um, obviously you guys did several festivals then. Um, mm -hmm. Well, you did the next festival with him. Um, so I wanted to know as far as the beginning, towards the beginning of the movie, there's I don't want to say dance scenes, <laughs> but mm -hmm. I, I love how they introduce the film with theater, essentially. And I wanted to know if, like, behind, like what the choreography process was like behind some of the scenes towards the, in the first half of the film. Yeah, um, so that specific dance sequence that you're talking about is not me. Um, it, it was somebody else. And it was very much just like the idea of watching of Little Potato kind of like seeing um, the, the world as a movie and how he interpreted a trauma to be able to compartmentalize it into something that was more, you know, um, palatable for like, not palatable, but, uh, you know, comprehensible to a child. Um, and I just... I kind of still marvel at Wes's brain for like having all of these ideas and putting them onto a screen and executing them. And it, yeah, it's a really, really special, a special movie and an interesting approach. I love it. Yeah, I like it a lot too. And it reminded me, it's funny because you said Marvel, but it reminded me a lot of, I don't know if you saw WandaVision, um, mm -hmm. but it's, you know, kind of the same thing. Like she traps herself in TV because she mm -hmm. doesn't want, you know reality so that that was something that it reminded me of and I thought that was pretty cool um, yeah <laughs> um so did you ever think that you would play any other part when you were when you were reading or were you specifically looking to be the mom or were yeah, you specifically I was specifically reading for the mom I guess I should yeah say. I was specifically asked to audition um for Lena in Russia and honestly even that role felt very much like a stretch for me it's it, it's extremely different than anything that came across my email from age to type to all all different sorts of things so um I think I just focused I was like okay I guess I have to do my best and <laughs> to try my hardest on this one but yeah I was provided with the whole script when I first auditioned and it was just like it's like a rabbit hole because I was reading it and I was like, there's no way this is real. And then I was like, wait, it actually is real. What the heck? <laughs> then you looked it up and you're like, oh, wow. Yeah, I looked it up and I was like, okay, the BBC says it true, says it's true, so it must be true. <laughs> the, the internet says it's true. I know. <laughs> but, I always um, believe everything you read on Google. <clears throat> so how much time did you spend getting your, um, how much time did you spend with the young actor? Uh, who plays potato to get your guys's uh, not charisma but your um, blanket on the word uh, I know what you're trying to say to, to, to make it so that you guys are able to act alongside each other and be comfortable yeah with chem chemistry chemistry thank you ah, yes. I was like it's not <laughs> we got not there together <laughs> <laughs> yeah um, chemistry yes <laughs> chemistry um well we had one <laughs> chemistry read before I was offered the role because they had they had um Hirsch Powers who plays Potato in Russia they had had him cast for a long time um so I had a chemistry read with him and then I think we had a few rehearsals and we clicked pretty instantly. He's awesome and like just such a cool child that I was like, yeah, I want to be your fake mom. Um, and yeah, it was just really fun. Like working with him was amazing and he's an awesome kid. That's awesome. That's cool. Yeah. So um, as far as your, that's your mother. Well, I guess your character's mother, that is like, compared to a shadow or the dark cloud that's following you around. Yes. Um, do you feel like that actress was at all intimidating um, because of her 
experience uh, in in the in the uh, TV and movie world, or yeah, <laughs> or you feel like you gained a lot from working with her. How what was that like? Oh, I gained so much from working with her because you know, she's been at it for a, a, a lot longer than I have. That's for sure. You know, <laughs> to my like two years, she had, I don't, I don't even know 20 or more. Um, so I just, it was pretty amazing. She was attached to the project as well before I was. So I saw that and I was like, oh, like, wow, like this is real. This is like a real professional situation. Um, so I was definitely a little intimidated, but I, I, I swallowed it with just trying to be like, professional and prepared and all this stuff but I learned so much just by how she moves on set she is a wonderful human being so kind and generous but also like has like knows when she needs to ask for things and um knows when to voice you know ideas and all these things in just like a very conversational way and I I was like whoa like we're allowed we're allowed to do that like we're we're allowed to have this be a collaborative environment like what the heck so it was just having it be my my first movie um learning from someone who was so you know well versed in this industry was was really really special and something that I'll take with me for a long time yeah she's yeah. awesome that, I mean and that seems really cool because just from what I've learned from doing interviews it seems that um you know, actors, it's, it's hard for them to speak up, but it's specifically actresses. Um, so it's really cool that she gave you that uh, confidence to go forward with and in, in your yeah. projects. Um, what was it about your role that you played in this that you hope to either look for in future auditions or try to avoid in future roles? Like the way that I approached it? Or yeah, the, or like yeah. just once you were done with uh, the, you know, playing the character and you look back and you're like, okay, this is my experience showed me that maybe I'm a little better with this. Maybe I, I mm. should, this was a challenge and I want to attempt this some more, anything like that. Yeah, I think like the, the type of character, she's, she's very grounded and probably is, is the most grounded character in that whole first section because she's just so rude she lives so much in her head and I love characters like that I think they're really interesting because there's so much room for internal dialogue and what's going on in, in your head out outside of this outside world that the viewer sees and I think that those are really really special experiences I think that a lesson that I learned in the movie as a whole is that like I um I was really scared. I was so scared as an, as like a human going into this experience. And like, I, I didn't need to be, you know? And I think that like going forth with confidence and like realizing that I am, you know, I was cast, they chose me. Like I'm there for a reason. That is like the big, biggest thing that I need to take with me in every single future um, experience, because I don't think that that fear is ever going to go away, but it's about like how I, as a person and as an actor ap approach that fear and how I deal with it and like use it you know yeah no yeah I yeah. like I like that for sure so um when did you when were you able to see the full movie for the first time or have you not watched, been able to no I have I I was sent a link before it premiered at South by Southwest and I watched it in my dark bedroom alone with headphones <laughs> because I am mortified at watching myself on on um this on any, any I'm why I, I hate watching myself so I like watched it alone and I was like oh my god and then I remember you know my sister and my parents or stuff they would they watched it South by Southwest and because it was all virtual so they watched it at home they're like you need to watch it with us and I was like absolutely not <laughs> I, just, I just can't but once I was able to finally take my, myself out of it it's um it's just so special it's such it's such a unique journey and just the overriding messages are, are so so heartwarming and I just love it did you happen to use an accent at all I um didn't have it very loud but I noticed when it switched to the other like halfway through or like maybe towards the third act um mm -hmm. it was prominent because I think you said it was a different actress um mm -hmm. which was kind of obvious but um <laughs> but did you at all try to do a Russian accent when you were first <coughs> filming 
Yeah, so Wes will be able to speak more to this, but um, we did not use any accents in the scenes that were supposed to be in Russia, I think, because it's like, to us, um, living there, like, we don't, talking to each other, we don't have accents to each other, you know, but then when we go to America, we're othered, and there's that idea of us being um, seen differently uh, as like this kind of other entity from a different place so then that's when the accents came in as makes, a way to like differentiate between um, them and us kind of thing well and that's that makes perfect sense actually because that that leaves it up in the air is are they speaking russian is is this just being conveyed to us in english and i yeah. like that i like that um, yeah rather than you know automatically putting subtitles or whatever it kind of leaves it up to the to the audience with that that's pretty cool um as far as Wes goes is this the mm -hmm. first time you've worked with him yes yeah okay so you did it intimidate you at all that the story was actually about his life and like that he might get hurt or feel some type of way by the way you were you were playing his mother yeah you know by from the very first moment that um, I met him, he like welcomed me with such warmth and love and kindness that there was never a part of me that was scared. Like he is just an amazing human being and is so kind to me and gave me so much confidence from working with him that, um, yeah, no, I never felt that way. And I'm so lucky that this project brought him into my life because he's, he is a gem. That's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. Um, so I know you said this is your first movie, but you yeah. had other projects in the past, correct? Yes. Can you talk about any of those? Yeah. So a lot of the projects that I had before this, um, were short films, like just local indie projects. Cause I'm, I'm from Seattle and I've started my career in Seattle and that's where Potato Dreams of America was filmed as well. And that's how I got cast in it. So it was, a cast local, which is radical. Otherwise I wouldn't be here. Um, but yeah, I had, that was probably like my first big thing. And then another short film that I was in um, just won the grand jury prize at the Seattle International Film Festival, which is amazing. Um, so I've had some decent festival luck, which is pretty cool. Cause that's, I mean, my heart really lies in, in indie movies. I think that they're absolutely beautiful and there's so much interesting creative license it's taken and I just find it to be where so much heart and um, creativity lies so I definitely want to keep working in that and then upcoming my first like biggish thing is I have a small role in a showtime show that's coming out in the fall so I just can't, I can't say what it is <laughs> I actually can't no it's um it's it's called three women it's an adaptation of an amazing book, oh yeah um, I did by see. Lisa Tadeo I did yeah see yeah, so I have a small role in that. And honestly, it's just, I feel so grateful to have had Potato Dreams of America because it has been a stepping stone to open a lot of doors for me. And I feel very lucky. And that's awesome. Personally, uh, to step back into Potato, I, I uh, resonated with you know some of the uh, LGBTQ stuff. I was curious yeah. if there's anybody in your life um, that, you think is going to be, you know, kind of connect to those themes in this, uh, or anybody in your life that helped you, helped you work through that and work through that when you were uh, using that character um, and playing with the kid. I, I just use some really weird words when asking when you were No, I think I think I know what you're child. saying. Yeah, <laughs> I um, I have been really lucky like Seattle has been an incredible place to grow up because so much of the just general energy is just like acceptance so like I've, I've never known anything except for like like just like everybody is amazing just the way they are like why does anything else matter so I think that like automatically this sense of leading with love and just being like, of course, like the overall message is like, of course, I still love you. Like that, that is like the, the core of this whole movie. Um, and I think so many of the people that I surround myself with lead with that um, exact sense of love. So that was really, it's just kind of innate 
for me. And I think it's innate for a lot of the people that I surround myself with. I feel really, really lucky to say that. <laughs> and I think, I think it's like, I dream of Seattle now. <laughs> like, but you, yeah. I have dreams of Seattle. Like, Seriously. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, is there anything that you would like to say about potato dreams that we did not cover um, before I let you go? I know I will be talking to Wes, but I wanted to make sure that I yeah, give you a chance to answer anything that people don't usually ask you. I I don't think I can think of anything, which is a boring answer. Um, <laughs> people but, say that all the time. It's okay. Yeah, I'm just, you asked a lot of really, really great questions. I think you covered it all. Um, no, but it's just been so great to talk to you. And, and thank you so much for having me on. Of course. Did you want to plug any social media for your fans and uh, who are reading or are yeah, reading, listening or watching? Yeah, you know, if you if you want to follow me on the gram, I'm at, at Sarah Barbieri. My complicated name will probably be in the title of this episode, so you can find the spelling there. Uh, <laughs> mostly just photos of nature and sometimes photos of stuff that I'm in. So <laughs> I'd love to have you around. Okay, awesome. Well, thank you so much for your time and you make sure you stay safe. Thank you. Have a good one, Joseph.